Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to cure your hook for good. All right guys, so obviously we've done a lot of videos about shallowing your downswing and fixing the slice and getting rid of over the top. And, and certainly that's the greater majority of you guys who are watching this, but there are a lot of people who send us videos and messages that, hey, I have a hook or, or I don't fall into that steep pattern. I need, I need a fix for that. So I wanna make sure you guys have that uh, what we're going to talk about today is A, or first, why you hit a hook, and then uh, second, how to fix it. We have a couple of drills here that uh, should get rid of it permanently if you, if you do and stick with them. So first things first in terms of a hook, the thing you need to understand, just like a slice pattern, the king of the hill is the club face. So if you're someone who hits a hook or curves a ball too far from right to left, you need to understand that you have a club face that's too closed to your path. Now, why is it too close? I have no idea why. It could be a lot of different things. Some of the things you have to look for would be grip. So obviously, if I took a normal setup, the stronger the grip, if it was really rotated clockwise, um, that would uh, promote a, a more closed club face. I could do some things during my backswing that would close a club face, some things are down. So you have to figure out why it's closed uh, and look at that. Uh, maybe grip, maybe another piece. So, so check that part first. Your club face is too close to your path we have to find out why, we have to start to correct that. Now, the second thing we see with the hook is the ball position. So if I were gonna take a normal setup, I have an eight iron here. For these uh, short to mid irons, I like to see the ball position somewhere between my sternum location and my shirt logo. So somewhere in here to me would fall neutral. I would hardly never ever hit a full swing shot with the ball to the right ever behind my sternum location. Now for you guys that hit hooks or draws, typically that's associated with a ball position that's farther back. So you want to uh, check this, meaning the more back the ball is in my stance, the more I'm gonna catch the ball on the inside part of the arc and hit pushes and hooks, okay? If I have the ball position more neutral, it would lessen that effect. If I had the ball position more forward, it would even lessen it more dramatically. So for me, someone who's hit hooks my whole life, I could, I could always lessen my hook if I just move the ball more forward. So start with the simple stuff. Make sure your grip's not overly strong. Uh, can you hit a, a, a draw, a normal shot or a fade with a strong grip? Of course you could. Um, Dustin Johnson and Bruce Kepka in the US Open were just hitting uh, fades with strong grips. It's, it's not impossible. I'm just saying um, as a stock pattern, make sure it's not overly strong. Check your club face first. Second, after you check your club face's ball position, make sure the ball's more forward. Make sure it's not too far back. Do those things first if you hit a hook. Now. The second part, I'm gonna shift gears here a little bit. Let's assume your club face is somewhat neutral and your grip's neutral. Let's assume your ball position's not too far back. Um, the next part of the hook and what you have is a path that's overly inside out, right? So if I wanted to hit the biggest draw in the world, I'll go ahead and demonstrate one. Here would be my, I'll hit a neutral shot first. So here's a neutral path shot for me. And that's a pretty straight uh, shot there. Now, if I wanted to hit a hook, the first thing I would do is I would kick my path much more from inside out. So I'd feel like I swing the club more from in here and I'd swing it out to the right more past impact. This would be my uh, hook swing here. And that was probably about a five yard draw. So the path being to the right hits the hook. Now, obviously, if you're struggling with a hook, your path is too far to the right. What do you do? Well, before I put the practice stations in, some things you can do from the top of your um, backswing, and some people are gonna like it, some aren't, it doesn't matter. If, if you do these things and you feel it and it works, who gives a shit? do them and straighten your ball flight out. If I go to the top like this, and I'm too far inside out, equal and opposite, what do I need to feel? I need to feel like I'm more over the top, more outside in. If you're way inside out and hitting hooks, you could feel way over the top and you'll probably hit the ball pretty darn straight. Okay, if I'm way um, underneath like this, you can actually feel like you steep in the shaft a little bit. Is that incorrect? No, it's not. If you feel like you steep in the shaft and it puts you just normal back on plane, that's perfectly fine. What else can you do from that? Well, something I do a lot when I play is I would feel the club exit more left past impact. And we'll get into that here in a minute. It's perfectly okay for me to feel like the club works more to the left. The more left it works past impact, the less it's gonna draw. Um, and the more that'll neutralize your ball flight pattern. So, so sort of quick things for you guys, it's feel the club more over the top, feel it work more left. Basically just do the opposite um, of your normal draw pattern. Okay, now drill wise, everybody likes drills. Um, so a couple things. Number one, I have a range bucket here. So I'm gonna set this up and I'll show you how I do that. So this is my always my first thing I do with someone if they have a hook 
and they're swinging too far inside out is I'll put this bucket here. Now I've done some of this before um, on other platforms. Um, so basically, and I'll show you at the end here how to set these pieces up, but essentially I have it halfway between my foot and the ball. I have it just underneath the angle that the, the club is on that I'm using. It's in my way. If I were to come down like this, I would hit it. So from a, from a closer angle here, I would put the edge of the bucket, roughly a club head, maybe slightly more than a club head from my toes. And then from down the line, I would take whatever club I'm using and I would angle it, um, put, put it flat on the ground, and I would want the bucket to be just under the angle that the club would naturally sit. So from the face on angle, I wanna put the front edge of the bucket in line with the middle of my toes. Anywhere ahead of that would be too far forward and behind that would be too far back. I wanna have the front of the bucket in line with the middle of my toes from face on. And when you first start this, you wanna definitely feel like it's in your way. And I would start with just little short ones. So I'm gonna just do like a little 100 yarder. And when I do that and I exaggerate, that gives me just little baby fades. And just like the other drills, I do maybe half to three quarter swings, 100 yards, 50%, feel the club head working outside um, of this bucket. And that just gives me little baby fades when I do it. This is the first one I use with everyone across the board. You come in and see me, you have hooks, we do this first. Um, unless you're shanking it, then I don't throw this in this dude, but usually I would do this first all the time. This will be option number one. Okay, option number two would be I just add a layer to that. So I have a alignment rod that has tape on it, and I would do the same thing as this, but now I'm gonna make it a little bit more difficult. So if I put the ball in here, take my normal setup. Now for this, I move this back a little bit farther, but it's still kind of in the same spot uh, with, with the face on view here. I usually, you can see the bucket's a little bit farther back. I set it up where it's roughly, again, I will pose this club parallel. I put it roughly halfway down the shaft. I want to make sure that I would never hit the stick with my hands back or down. So it's a little bit farther away, half to three quarters of the way down the shaft. I take the club back where the club's parallel to the ground on my toe line, and I want to have that stick about an inch or two uh, in front of that. This would be a little bit more exaggerated, again, from the top. If I get too dumped underneath, so I get this back a little bit more. If I get too dumped underneath, I'm gonna run into this stick. I wanna feel like the club stays a little bit more out in front of me, if you will. And I do the same thing. I'm gonna start short and slow and kind of work my way up. Keep the club more out in front. <coughs> Excuse me. This one for me definitely feels a little bit more exaggerated than normal. So I'll just do one more. And what's gonna happen again is you're not gonna get that hook pattern. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you're someone who <coughs> comes way inside, this is gonna feel way in your way. You're gonna have to feel like the club's way outside going back. And I'm talking like way more in front and way more steep coming down. This would be practice session or um, uh, station number two that I would use. And then the third one I would do, and when doing a hook and getting rid of a hook, you wanna get rid of the club coming too far inside. You'll, you wanna put a station, <coughs> behind the ball between your foot and the golf ball. So something in this area all the time is where you would do for a hook and then you would do the opposite of that. So I would take this and go to the right of the target. This would be my last station I would do. This is one, uh, I was just watching a video of Brooks Kepka for a little review we did and he had this in front of him a couple months ago to help hit the fade. This is one of my go-tos. So you take a stick and you put it out in front of you to replicate the same piece. Now this is fairly conservative. Probably make this a little bit harder. And again, on day one when you're doing these, you want these to feel pretty drastic. So here's how I'd set this up, would be the opposite of back here. Um, I put the stick in the bucket far enough forward, again, where I would never hit my hands. I typically put it about halfway, maybe a little bit farther than this down the shaft, so I'd never hit it with my hands. It would have went closer than that. And really the goal is to have the stick on an angle that's low enough where when you get to that follow through spot, it's just a couple inches above that um, is the goal with this. I put my shaft in front, roughly on my toe line, parallel to the ground. I have about an inch or two um, under, above the shaft between this um, stick and then the, and the club. And my goal here is gonna be, I want the club head working to the left pass impact, again, to get rid of that draw pattern. So I'll take my normal setup. I'll just do a little half one here first. And that for me, again, feels a little bit more exaggerated. It's about a five yard cut. And this is what I want. <clears throat> if you're someone who hits hooks 
you want to see some cuts. Like you want to exaggerate some of these things and you want to have the golf ball curving to the right. This shouldn't feel minor, especially on day one. This should feel uh, pretty exaggerated and that gets the ball curving left to right for me pretty nicely. So those are the three practice stations um, that I would use. A bucket behind me, always number one. I'd put the stick in number two and put this in front and see what works best for you. If you're a guy that hooks and you see the club's exiting way to the right pass impact, you probably want to start with this one, get it working left. Um, if it gets way inside early, you want to put this back here. Do one of those two, exaggerate those two, get your path um, back to normal first, hit some cuts. And, and again, if you're trying to get rid of the hook, don't be afraid to hit a bunch of cuts in the beginning, exaggerate some slices so you can find middle ground. So hook pattern. Your club face is too close, do something um, to get it back to neutral. Make sure your ball position's not too far back. And then fix the path with one of these stations or something similar to that. Something inside here or out there. I hope that all makes sense. Don't forget to exaggerate these pieces in the beginning. Hope that all helps. Let me know if you guys have any questions.